This is Rick Carga Residential Energy Dynamics. I'm going to walk you through the use of the Red Calc Free ASHRAE 62.2 2016 ventilation tool. This longer tutorial is for those users who have already watched the short tutorial but want to learn more about using the Red tool in the ASHRAE 62.2 standard. If you're new to using Red Calc tools, please first watch these introductory videos. This Red Calc Free tool is for sizing dwelling unit ventilation in new and existing dwellings in both single family and multifamily buildings. An important feature of all Red Calc tools is the pop up help dialog box. Each input label, which is black font, and result label, which is always in blue font. If you click on those labels, I'll click on floor area now, you see a pop-up help, which explains what the input or the result is. It also gives you ranges, allowed range, and the normal range. And you can disengage by Xing it out. If you're using a touch device, you just touch the label, the pop-up help will show, then you can exit out the same way here. Now before I make this pop-up help disappear, notice the allowed range and notice the normal range. If I go to living area and I enter 400, which is below the normal range, I get an exclamation point indicating that I am out of range and maybe I should check my values. On the other hand, if I make a serious mistake and enter negative 500 for the floor area, there will be a stop sign that will show and this will not allow me to calculate anything until I fix my mistake. So one is a warning and the other is a stop sign. You will find with this red tool and many of the others as you select and deselect items on the tool, the tool will expand and contract. Now the last time you saw this it was smaller. I have changed some of my selections and now it is bigger. I am going to start at the top of the tool and work down. First of all, new or existing construction the ASHRAE standard treats new and existing construction differently. As this selection is changed, the tool will change the things that show and the things that don't show. The example that I'm going to do, I'll do a couple of examples, will be for existing buildings. The next item, dwelling unit, is detached or attached to other dwelling units. This has to do with a new feature of the 2016 version of the 62.2 standard called horizontally attached dwellings in multifamily buildings. The default for this dropdown is detached. If, on the other hand, I select attach to other dwelling units, notice that another input shows itself only walls are in common with other dwelling units, yes or no. Now the default for this dropdown is yes. If I choose no, a number of things disappear because in this case this is now addressing multifamily dwelling units that are stacked one above another rather than only attached side by side. So I'm going to go back now and click yes. So now this is set up to deal with horizontally attached dwelling units in multifamily buildings. The standard allows a partial infiltration credit for these buildings. And this has to do with duplexes, triplexes, row houses are a few examples. The next input is use infiltration credit. You can choose yes or no. Notice when I choose no, a great deal of the 
items in the tool, many of the inputs disappear because much of it has to do with the calculation of the infiltration credit, which is the most difficult calculation that is done with this calculation aid. I'm going to go back to yes. You should select yes if you're working on a new or existing dwelling and you wish to account for air leakage as measured by a blower door test. If you're using this tool for single family detached buildings, we recommend you use the infiltration credit. However, if you're sizing dwelling unit ventilation for stacked dwellings in multifamily buildings, that is one above another, the 62.2 standard does not allow the use of an infiltration credit. So in that case, set this choice to no. The next section of the red tool is closest weather station. Select either the United States or Canada. I've selected the United States. You can select one of the 50 states. I've selected Colorado. By the way, Washington, D.C. is not listed as one of the states. If you go to the state of Virginia, you will find Washington, D.C. Reagan Airport. So if you are working, living in the D.C. area, you will find Reagan Airport in the Virginia data. And here you see for a particular state, you will see the cities that are listed for weather stations, I have chosen the Denver International Airport. After choosing those three dropdowns, we get the result of the weather and shielding factor of 0.59 for the Denver International Airport. This value is used for the calculation of the infiltration credit. While you weren't looking, I switched to another red calc tool, the Weather Station Data Tool, TMY, stands for Typical Meteorological Year. This can be helpful in finding the closest weather station to wherever you're working, even if it's in another state. What I'm going to do is turn on the weather map. This is a Google map. And you can see that the weather station that is selected up here in the drop down menus is a red dot. The other existing weather stations, which I could select, are pink dots. If I select, for example, Boulder, you'll notice that Boulder moves to the center of the screen. And now Boulder is up here in the selected weather station. Let's assume that I'm looking at a house that is north of Fort Collins, maybe somewhere around where this Route 25 sign is. That is probably closer to Cheyenne in Wyoming than it is to the Loveland, Colorado weather station. So I could go ahead and choose Cheyenne. Without a map, you really wouldn't know which the closest weather station is. I'm going to go again to choose Denver. There are many other good things you might be interested in with this tool. There's a lot of interesting weather data and you can find out the latitude, the longitude of the weather station and also the altitude. We will use this value in a little while. Again, while you weren't looking, I switched back to the ASHRAE 62.2 2016 ventilation tool. I want to look now at the building data section right here, starting with floor area, where I have entered 2050. Now, that's not actually what I entered. I'll show you what I entered. I, I'm going to click on the input box here. This is a two-story house, as you can see from the dwelling height. And I've got two times, one part of the house, 24 times 16, two times because it's two floors, plus two times the other section of the house, 32 by 20. This feature that we call math on the fly allows you to do your mathematics right in the input box. That's why this input box is so long, so you can do calculations like this in it. If I click outside of the box, you can see you get the result of your mathematics. 2050 
square feet. Of course, you can change this with any of the red tools. We could change this to square meters. We get 190. I'm going to go back to square feet. Question that often comes up is should I include a basement square footage in a house that I'm analyzing? The 2016 version of the standard clears this up a little bit. It states that if the basement is finished in a manner similar to the upstairs, it should be included in the square footage. Of course, the basement should also be a part of the pressure envelope of the house. Continuing with the building data section, and I have scrolled the tool a bit, next number of occupants, you have choices here in a drop-down of from 1 to 10 occupants, as you can see. The standard does not allow one occupant. You need to have at least two, but we put one in here so you can do what-if problems. Notice what happens if I choose one. In the tool, a message appears to warn you that it's not compliant with the ASHRAE standard. I'm going to go back to 4 for my example. The standard allows you to increase the number of occupants over and above the number of bedrooms plus 1. And to do that, you merely have to add seven and a half CFM per occupant. The red tool takes care of that for you. The standard also says you may decrease the number of occupants from the number of bedrooms plus one if the authority having jurisdiction allows you to do so. So it's not as easy to decrease the number of occupants as it is to increase. To decrease, you need approval. The next input in the building data section of the tool is building height. The standard assumes 2.5 meters as the height for one floor. If you convert that to feet, that is 8.2 feet. Just in case you're wondering, I have put 17 feet in this example. The standard defines the building height as the vertical distance between the lowest and the highest above grade points within the pressure boundary. That's a very clear definition of what building height is. For simple houses, such as the one pictured here, this is quite easy to determine. On the other hand, it can be a larger problem, a bigger problem for more complex houses to figure out the vertical distance between the highest and the lowest above grade points. The last input in this section is the measured leakage at 50 pascals. I have entered 1400 CFM at 50 pascals or CFM 50. This is a measurement you get from a blower door for the whole house. If the basement is included in your square footage, the basement door should be open for this blower door test. If the basement is not included in your square footage, the basement door should be closed. That is the door from the main part of the house to the basement. This is an important value. It is needed for the infiltration credit, just as the building height is needed for the infiltration credit. The next section of the tool is Use Advanced Blower Door Inputs. Now, by default, this is not checked, and sometimes you might want to use this. I'll mention when to use it, when we recommend to use it, and when not to use it. In most cases, you probably won't want to use this. It'll take a little bit more time, and it makes the tool longer. But I certainly want to explain this. I'm going to check it. What we have here is the type of blower door test, pressurization or depressurization, indoor temperature. If you have a great temperature difference between indoors and outdoors, it's a good idea to go ahead and use this part of the tool. I'm putting down 68 degrees indoors and outdoors 10 degrees. If you want minus 10, you would put a minus before this number, 10. Altitude, remember this is the Denver, Colorado airport, and from the weather station data tool, I got a value of 54.13 for the altitude that's there. And of course, the 
temperature differences and the altitude have an impact on the density of the air and that will affect the blower door test. So it's very important that you choose proper value here. Is it depressurization or pressurization because that affects your results. Notice if I click on pressurization, the resulting adjusted leakage at 50 pascals goes in the other direction. Our start is 1400. If it's a pressurization test with these values, it goes up to 1528. If it's a depressurization test, which is what most of us use most of the time because it's easiest, notice it goes down to 1300. The pressure exponent is something that you would use if you are doing a multi-point blower door test and you know what the pressure exponent is. If you do a single point, I suggest very strongly you leave this alone, leave it set at the default of 0.65. Here is the adjusted leakage right here from 1400. Now if we unclick this, our calculations will use 1400. If we click it, our calculations for ventilation will use this adjusted values. Notice when I unclicked and clicked, the same values stayed here. Now as far as when should you use this section, we recommend that you use it if you have a significant temperature difference, say more than 40 degrees between indoors and outdoors. Use it if you are at a significant altitude or if you have done a multi-point blower door test and you know your pressure exponent. Otherwise, it's probably best just to leave this section alone. It will make your calculations a bit easier. Next, I'm going to talk about the alternative compliance path of the ASHRAE 62.2 standard. That is covered in the Use Local Ventilation Alternative Compliance section of the RED tool. The alternative compliance path is allowed for existing buildings only that do not meet the 62.2 standard prescriptive requirements for local exhaust ventilation fans in kitchens and bathrooms. These prescriptive requirements are 100 CFM exhaust fan in a kitchen that is demand controlled and for bathrooms 50 CFM exhaust fan that is demand controlled. The alternative compliance approach requires that you increase the flow rate of the dwelling unit ventilation in order to compensate for the deficiencies or the deficits in local kitchen and bathroom exhaust ventilation. Using the alternative compliance path is not best practiced, but it can save a lot on installed costs. For the details of the alternative compliance section of the RED tool, first of all, you can select or deselect the kitchen. And notice I have entered values here already. If I deselect the kitchen, you can see it goes away. If I select it, the number I've already entered is there 65 and then for bathrooms I can select anywhere from 0 to 5. If I select 5 notice what happens. There's a default in there it says enter 0 if there is no ventilation in that particular room. That's a reminder don't leave it blank but enter 0. I'm going to go back to two for my example, two bathrooms. Then in this part of the table, I have the fan flow. Now the ASHRAE standard states that the fan flow must be measured. The existing fan flow must be measured. So that's what we have here. Does it have an openable window or not? If it has an openable window, that has an impact on the total deficit over here. Now notice with the kitchen, if there's no openable window, the deficit increases to 35. An openable window allows you to decrease the deficit by 20 CFM. You can see as I clicked it, that happened here. Kitchen 65, I measured it, has an openable window. I check that. It makes no difference whether it has one openable window or seven, I click this 
and I get a credit toward the deficit of 20. Bath number one, I measure it. It has a fan flow of 25 CFM. Bath number one has an openable window. It has a total deficit of 5 CFM. Bath number two, I measure the fan. It has a CFM of 30. No openable window because it's on the interior of the house. Therefore, it has a deficit of 20. And the entire deficit, all of these added together, adds up to 40 CFM. Now for the dwelling unit ventilation results. By the way, before the 2016 version of the 62.2 standard, this was called whole building ventilation. First of all, effective annual average infiltration rate. This is a value that you get from your blower door test, and it's an averaged constant flow rate that has the equivalent effect on air quality is the real year-round ventilation infiltration rate. So that's the infiltration. Next, an important number is the total required ventilation rate, or Qtot. Now, Qtot comes from the equations that are now listed on the slide as an overlay. Qtot is the total amount of ventilation that we need. This will be made up of natural air leakage and mechanical ventilation. Next is the alternative compliance supplement. That comes from the alternative compliance path section of the tool just above. And remember, for our example, the total deficit was 40. We divide that by 4, and that gives us 10. So that number gets added to the 91 from Qtot. So now we have 101. Next is the infiltration credit. This comes from our blower door test also, and it is Qinf for infiltration. And for existing homes, this value, 58 CFM, will always be equal to this value, the effective annual average infiltration rate. However, for new homes, the infiltration credit is limited to two-thirds of Qtot, this value right here. So we have 91. We add the alternative compliance supplement to that. We subtract the infiltration credit amount. This is the amount that is coming from natural air leakage. And the remaining amount is the required mechanical ventilation rate, or Q-fan. For this example, that is 44 CFM. Once you have your calculated results in this section of the tool, you can then move on to the bottom two sections of the tool. First of all, dwelling unit ventilation runtime solver. This section of the tool calculates the required runtime of your ventilation if you don't operate the fan continuously. For example, our problem determined that we needed a dwelling unit ventilation fan of 44 CFM. Well, what can we do? We, chances are we can't get a 44 CFM fan on the market. The fans are usually bigger. We could buy a 90 CFM fan with a capacity of 90 CFM and use a variable speed control and bring it down to 44 CFM. Another way of getting the ventilation we need each hour is to run the fan intermittently. That's where this section of the tool helps you. For example, let's assume that the fan we buy has a capacity of 90 CFM. We put that in this input box right here, and then the result tells us that the fan runtime per hour is 29 minutes, or we could just say 30 minutes. So if the fan runs for 30 minutes, it's off for 30 minutes. That satisfies the requirement, the minimum requirement of 44 CFM by the ASHRAE standard. This last section of the 62.2 red tool calculates the corresponding measured leakage at 50 pascals 
for an entered target mechanical ventilation rate based on the dwelling characteristics. This section is intended to determine at what leakage rate value the required mechanical ventilation will equal 15 CFM based on a provision of the 622 standard that does not require dwelling unit ventilation to be installed if the calculated Q fan is 15 CFM or less. Now remember, I passed over it quickly, this resulting value is based upon the characteristics of the building, the number of people, the height, the weather factor, and all of that. So here I have 15 CFM entered, and if you have a required ventilation of 15 CFM or less, you don't have to install any. This tells us that the corresponding leakage rate is 2100. Well, for our particular building, we have 1400. I'm going to scroll up here, and you see right here we have 1400. So we're not going to go ahead and make the building looser. So this is nice to know, but this building is tighter than 2100 and we can't do anything about that. You could enter any number in here, for example zero, and you can see that you'd end up with zero ventilation for the characteristics of the building if your corresponding leakage rate was 2500. I'll go back to 15 here, click outside the box, again you see 2100. All right, before I finish, there is one thing I said I would go back to. That is the infiltration adjustment for horizontally attached multifamily. Remember, if the multifamily units are stacked, that is one above the other, there is no infiltration credit allowed. So in that case, you would have to choose no right here. But if they are horizontally attached side by side, then you would choose attached to other dwellings. There's another input that appears, a drop down. Only walls are in common with other dwelling units. And that has to be yes to be able to take this credit. And if those drop downs are engaged, you will find then further on down in the tool, there are some other inputs that show and you must fill these in. I moved away from the tool to explain what's going on here using some pictures and illustrations. Our example house that we've been using is about 2,000 square feet, just over that. And for now, let's assume that instead of being a detached single family house, it is attached horizontally in a horizontally adjacent way as these row houses are. Let's assume it's the same size, it's two floors, and just over 2,000 square feet. So let's look at the horizontally attached infiltration credit adjustment. First of all, you have to do a blower door test of the unit. What's different about horizontally attached units and a detached unit is that with horizontally attached, some of the surface area is in common with units next to. So we have to do a blower door test and we do an adjustment to take account of the common attachments, the common walls. We calculate the fraction of the enclosed area, the six sides, that is not attached to other units or garages, and that's what we take as our infiltration credit. We multiply the infiltration estimate from the blower door test by this fraction, and that shows in the equation right here. Q fan, or the amount of mechanical ventilation we need, is equal to Q tot minus Q int for the infiltration. This is for detached, but when we have horizontally attached, then we have this value here, A sub exterior, or A sub X, which is equal to the exterior surface over the total envelope surface. Again, the exterior surface over the total envelope surface. You'll find for our example, this ends up being 80% or 0.8. So we're only allowed to take 80% of this amount and subtract that from Q tot so Q fan goes up. 
So let's look at an illustration of what we've got for our horizontally attached row house. The one in question is the light green one in the center. Here's our equation that we just looked at. So let's look at this piece by piece. Let's say this is a triplex or row houses, one, two, and three, and they're 40 by 25, eight foot ceilings for each story, two stories tall. The 1,000 in each of these cases is the ceiling and the floor, 1,000 square feet, which is 40 by 25 for each of these three units in this multifamily building. Again, we're looking at the center one. The front and back turns out being 640 square feet. That's also exposed to the exterior. Now these end values, this is an end wall, 400 square feet. Here's an end wall down here, 400 square feet. But for the center unit, the one in question, we have 400 square feet and 400 square feet of wall in common with the adjacent units. So the to total surface per unit is listed here. And if you want, you can stop the video and check my figures here and try to figure this out. It's rather complex. The infiltration adjustment we have here for the end units, this one and this one, we multiply Q in by 90% or 0.9. And for the middle unit that we're using in our example, A sub exterior is 80% or 0.8. So that's how we figure it out. Now you can see this is rather complex. A nice thing about the red tool is it does all of this for you. You still have to do some measuring and enter the values, add some things together. But remember, you can use the math on the fly of the red tool, it helps you out. Continuing the horizontally attached multifamily dwellings in the red tool, our example so far has been with dwelling unit is detached for the horizontally adjacent units. I'm going to select this in the dwelling unit is drop down. Then a new thing appears. Only walls are in common with other dwelling units. The default choice for that is yes. And then as we scroll down past the weather station data, that's going to stay the same. The beginning of the building data, we're leaving all of those the same. But then this new area appears when we select the drop downs for horizontally attached dwelling units above. And from our illustration that we just looked at, the area of common walls, we're looking at the center of the three row house units, 800 square feet. Envelope area of adjoining garages, we have zero for that. And then the remaining envelope area, 3280, which gives us a total of 4080. Now that has an impact on the infiltration credit. Remember with the illustration we came up with a A sub exterior value of 80% or 0.8. So now you see our infiltration has gone from 58. We still have that value up here but we take the 58 and multiply it times 0.8, which gives us 46 or 46 CFM is what we get for the infiltration credit. So the infiltration goes down, which means a larger portion of Q tote has to come from mechanical ventilation. So our mechanical ventilation goes up to 55 from 44 that we had with the single family detached dwelling. So I hope this shows you how the horizontally attached infiltration credit feature of the red tool works. And of course, the red tool is based on the ASHRAE 62.2 standard precisely. So you can be confident that everything 
that you do with the red tool will comply with the ASHRAE 62.2 2016 standard.